Anyway, so I don't know if I got a speedy fire, but I wasn't stopped by any fun police. But you never know. You never, never know. Uh, Lillian, good morning, good morning. Steph, Steph, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It's Steph's birthday today. Happy birthday, my darling, and I hope you have the most auspicious, the most blessed year ahead of you. Um, and uh, remember that there are lots of other people, and even the ones upstairs, that are also wishing you a happy birthday today. So, God bless you. Um, Patsy from Queensborough, good morning. Um, Lillian, Esme, good morning. Can't connect on YouTube. There are other people on YouTube, so Esme, just give it another, oh, no, give it another bash. Um, okay, are they back on? Right, YouTube's back up and running, um, so connect on, on YouTube. Beryl, good morning from a soft drizzle in PE. Hallelujah. Guys, you, you're in, you're in some deep doggy doo down there with, with rain, um, yeah, you really do need rain. So I'm really pleased that there's a little bit of a soft drizzle going on there. Um, Beryl, good morning. Melissa, um, uh, Rosemary from a wet Ruedepoort, fantastic. Um, Lisa, uh, oh, hallelujah. Uh, Judy, good morning. Adeline, good morning. Um, Felicity um, from Ganubi. Oh, what a lovely part of the world. What a lovely. Cookie, good morning. Good morning, Cookie. Um, Liz, uh, good morning to you as well. Let's see who else is here. Jean is from Waterfall. Uh, Jenny, um, sneak peek during the school break. We'll have to watch later. Just give them a book to read or tell them they must, they must like memorize something, you know. Give, give, them, give them a worksheet to do. I'm sure you can still do that. Yeah? Or make them read Great Expectations. That'll get them busy. <laughs> uh, Geraldine. Uh, Morale, good morning from a cool Cape Town. Linda. Uh, Linda Rass. Flower greetings from a rainy Pretoria. Hallelujah for the rain. Hallelujah. Nancy from Montesil. Uh, well done. That's just up the road from us here. I can probably wave to you. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're up there. Um, Sue, good morning. And um, this governor, good morning. Good to see you back. Good to see you back. Uh, right, guys, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, oh, Tion's back. Uh, Cape Town needs to pick a season and stick with it. <laughs> Tion, everything's a bit up and down. You can see I'm, I'm already sweating. It's, it's really hot, humid out here today. I think we're probably sitting at 201 on uh, the humidity uh, barometer or whatever it is. I've actually even got a fan going on at the back here because it's cooking. It's cooking hot. But never mind. We know when it's cooking hot, guys. We know that that does also mean that bugs are out and they are doing their thing and they are out to annihilate. And it it's part of the cycle. You know, it is what it is. But what, what is most important and what I really want to focus on today is how we actually make it better. How we how we better our plants and the environment so that we don't have these huge infestations. We don't have these huge onslaughts of bad hohos. So we grow our gardens to be more foolproof against pests, pest proof. So I want to talk really, it's pest proofing, but guys, fire away. Send us your questions um, because we're going to try and help you get through all of these um, bad hohos nunus. Um, now, but to get started, what I want to show you is that we are going to quickly go to a, if I can get it up here, right, we are going to quickly, quickly shoot to a quick PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you some pictures, pictures of hojos, hojos, right, I'm going to show you some pictures of hojos, guys, because you're probably going to recognize them, you're going to say, I know that one, I know it, I know it, and what you can do is you can kind of start counting on your fingers and then start on your toes about how many of these you actually do have in your garden. So, of course, we've got the beautiful mole. Oh, my goodness, and they've been busy, hey, and when we have a lot of rain, they get even busier, and when we, when we drop off with the rain and we've been through the dry season like this winter, the moles were out in full force. Boy, they were even calling all their mates. Come across. I found a great garden with lots of delicious plants, so come on over. Party's here. Party is right happening right here. Um, so, um, moles... Guys, there's, there's, there's not much. There's, there's not much that you can do except, of course, the mole probe. That's the mole repeller. You know this guy. I've spoken about it lots of times, guys. Um, this works on a sonic. You get the ones that are solar powered. You get the ones that are battery operated. Um, put them into your garden. Start off close near the house and then move it out where the mole is. So you don't start 
where the mole is in, in the garden. You, you start close to the house and then you move this guy every week or so, a few meters further out into the garden to where they are. Okay, so, so that's important, all right? So do that. Um, that's what you can do for moles. Other than that, please don't go start trying to poison them and, and all sorts of horrid things like that. Please don't do that. Um, all right, ha, oh, this boy. Isn't he awful? And he's big, eh? He's like, he's like about yo big. He's big. He's a big guy. He is just, he's revolting. In fact, he's absolutely revolting. That is called the mole cricket. Now, the mole crickets, um, if you're in Joburg, oh boy, they cause havoc in the lawn. They've got these big incisors. They eat away. They eat the roots. They eat the uh, the leaves. Um, they are complete, utter destructive little creatures. You can treat them. I suggest that you use something called 411 with insecticide. Now, folks, this is made by Fecto. You can go along to your local garden center and ask for it by name. It's the 411 with insecticide. So what are you doing? You're applying a fertilizer to your lawn and you have got the chemical in there which will get rid of the mole crickets. You can also use plant protector, all right? That's this stuff over here. You can use plant protector, and that is also specifically for mole crickets. Okay, so um, please follow the instructions. Please, please, please. It's really important because if you find, don't follow the instructions, something bad is going to go wrong. Very, very simple. Okay, so let's move along. Oh, what is that? What is that? Okay, that is a disease. That is very, very common on roses. That is called black spot. Now, like in the high felt, you've been getting lots of rain here in KZN. We've had lots and lots of rain. We've had heavy, um, heavy humidity, lots of mist, which means that bacteria diseases, funguses are going to be prevalent. And that is what we call black spot. Okay. And it's very common on any of the rosaceae family, roses. Okay. So what I want you to do is you need to work on your spray program especially for roses work on your spray program and rather also look at a preventative so for that you can use one of the rose cares you can also use funginex if you've got a if you've got a really bad infestation a really really bad infest infestation guys then you need to use something that's quite aggressive so I would recommend that you use funginex okay you also want to use a wetter with that please use a wetter. And what does a wetter or a sticker do? It means that if you're spraying today and you happen to get a downpour this afternoon, the wetter has helped your fungicide stick to the leaves so it doesn't all just wash off. And then you're like, oh, I've got to do this again, Leroy. Okay, so um, use that it, and it really does help. Also with your roses, if you've got to try and remove the lower if your lower leaves are very, very infested, remove those, please. Put them into a plastic packet and throw them away. Send them away with the rubbish. Don't put them onto your compost heap, please, or else burn them. Make a braai and burn them, okay? Start it as your kindling, but do not put it on your compost heap because those in the black spot, the fungal spores, live all over, all over. They're very, very fine. Sometimes if you rub your hand on the back of the leaf, you'll actually see it's like brown. Ha, huh. yeah, 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 brown, like a dust. Those are the fungal spores. And that, phew, they just go all over. All right, so so rather put them into a packet or else take those leaves and burn them. Okay, very important. Next up, this guy. Oh, and I've actually got an example. So you've been, I've been running around the garden this morning looking for, for hohos. And you know when you're looking for something? It's like when you're looking for a toothpick. You can't find it. Or you're looking for the nail clipper. I know I put it here. You know, when you're looking for it, it's you can't find it. When you want it, when you don't want it, it's there. Now, I'm running around the garden this morning looking for hojos and nunus and how's your father's. Do you think I broke up a sweat? It was like doing the Comrades Marathon this morning, running around the garden. So where are you now? I had, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, so let's go back to that slide quickly. Just go back to that slide, please. Right. Now, when you look, that is on the underside of the leaf. Now, now that is called red spider now guys red spider is minute tiny 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 but the way that you know that you've got red spider and mason i want you to come in like really close here can you see this leaf almost looks like it's yellowing slightly like it's got a bit of a mosaic on it yellowing yellowing slightly when i turn it over it looks similar to that slide yeah, it's got like, almost like funny color on it, right? And you see there, 
What have I just, what have I removed there? That's actually some of the web. That is the web of the red spider mite that I've actually just removed off there. There, I'll do it again. There it is there. Can you see that? There it is there. That's actually the web. Red spider is very, very, very small, very tiny. You'll find lots of, if you take this, if you're worried about it, if you're not too sure that it is it, take this, get a white piece of paper, and then just tap the leaf. Tap the leaf like this. Tap, 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 tap. And the little spiders chop, fall off. And if you see the dots moving on the page, <laughs> <laughs> if you see the dots moving, it hasn't, it's not because you've had some more stuff in your plonk. No, it is because those are spiders that are now running. That is red spider. Red spider is a difficult little creature to get rid of because their life cycle happens every three days. Three days! Talk about breeders. Happens every three days. They, they have very aggressive, aggressive life cycle. But guys, there are things that you can use. And what I would strongly suggest that you use is some Pest Pro. Pest Pro will do white fly. It will also do red spider in all of its cycles. Remember, we've spoken about this, guys. It's completely safe for you, me, the dogs, the ladybirds, the dragonflies. It's safe, guys. And that's what I love. And it's not going to kill the bees. And it's not going to kill the ladybirds. It's only going to get rid of the white fly in any of its stages or the red spider mite. Okay, so that's Pest Pro, guys. It's one sachet into one liter of water. Spray it on. And what this is, is you're applying this living fungus across the leaves. And as it grows, as the fungus starts growing and attaching to your plant, you can't see it, okay? But as it starts growing, it's little halfy. Oh, it's like an alien movie. It's halfy go in into the back of the neck or into the little eggs and suck it out. Beautiful story. Beautiful. Should be on Netflix. Right. Okay, so that is... Um, that is white fly and that is red spider. Really, really challenging. And especially if we have uh, hot, 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 hot summers with no rain, plants get stressed out, that's when you get it. Okay. Right, next up, scale. Oh, guys. Scale on aloes as well. Really a challenge. Um, very, very difficult to control. What I would suggest that you do here is you're going to spray with something like oleum. Okay. You can use oleum either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Um, now, oleum is, is, an, is an oil, so what it does is it basically smothers the scale because scale is quite a hard, hard um, uh, insect. Yeah, it's a hard insect. It's got a hard outer coating. So the only way you're going to, to get rid of it a quick way is to really use the oleum. You cover it with that and you basically smother it. Okay, so it's like putting a pillow over... No, I never said it. Anyway, so um, that's how you get rid of it. Use some oleum early in the mornings, late in the afternoon. You'll need to do that a good few times until you get the desired result. And what happens is the scale, eventually when, when it's dead, it just falls off. Okay, nice and easy. The other thing that you can use is you can use some plant protector, which I spoke about earlier. The plant protector, you can use that as a... Um, drench around the plant. Okay, so use it as a drench. You can also use something like cypromethrin, which is available from Stark Airs. You can use that as well with the wetter. Okay, important. So there are lots of solutions out there, guys. There are loads of solutions. Okay, ooh. Okay, here we have mildew. And yeah, it looks like mildew. It looks like mildew, you know, growing. You can see it growing like on the cornices or you see it in your shower. That is mildew, except this mildew grows on plants. It loves cucumbers. It loves pumpkins. It loves fuchsias. Um, and mildew comes about and is very difficult to control sometimes. And I need you to make some, s some smart decisions here. Um, so if it's on young plants, so if it's on your pumpkins, they've just started, you know, or your cucumbers and they've just started growing, if it's on your roses and, and they're in the early cycle, you then need to make the decision because this, this pumpkin, this cucumber, still got a long life. It's still got 60 days before it's going to produce any fruit. So you don't want to pull it out now and kill it. You, don't want, you want to make sure that you see it through. So then you want to use something like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is also natural 
natural way of getting rid of powdery mildew and downy mildew. So downy mildew on the underside of the leaf, powdery mildew on the top side of the leaf. But this over here eats it for breakfast. It eats powdery mildew, it eats downy mildew. The safe thing is, the nice thing is, you don't need to worry about what's going to happen to you when you eat the cucumbers afterwards. Okay, but this is where I want you to now be smart. So I pulled this out the garden this morning. Um, this is little chrysanthemum uh, pallidosum that is kind of like had its, it's, it's had its day. It's been right through winter. It's struggled along a bit now in early spring when the heavy rains have come. The chrysanthemum is completely unhappy. But if you take a closer look at its leaves, they've got a white film on them, like a white gray film. Okay. And that means it's now got mildew. So do I at this point say, well, I'm going to go and buy something and I'm going to spray it? No, guys, it's gone. It's past its sell-by date. Instead of investing money on a spray, rather go and pull these out and go and buy a few new plants that will work best in that position for your summer garden. Also some seeds. Okay, so you, you've got to decide on what is the lifespan left of this plant and is it worth investing in? That's really the decision that you guys have to make. Okay. Oh, hojos, hojos. Any caterpillar. Caterpillar, guys. Caterpillar eating your, your um, uh, what is it? Your chives, your beans, your, and, and in fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually found some this morning. Oh, my word. I hope he hasn't escaped. Where's this little bugger? Um, come on, where are you? Wait now. I know you. He's hiding now. The little swan. He was here this morning. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Mason, here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Ha, ha. See, there he is. Look at him. Look at you. He has munched this rose. Come, exhibit A. There you are, you little bugger. He has munched the petals of this rose stickant. Look at him here. He's munched it absolutely stickant. He's eaten it beautifully. How do I know? How did I know that there were some caterpillars there? Well, look into the rose. And there's his pups. Can you see? There's his pups. And if I do that, there they are. There it is. There's his little pups. There's his feces. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that little guy, he's going to get fed to my fish in about um, 30 minutes from now. So I'm just going to leave him there for now. What do you use? So on edibles, on roses, um, folks, on, whether it's on the foliage, um, whether it's cucumbers, whether it's any edible crop, you can use the eco-insect control. Eco-insect control works well. It's a, it's a good all-rounder. It will work for bollworm. It will work for, um, for caterpillars. It will work for leaf miner. Now, you're going to ask me, what is leaf miner? There is a waiting period, guys, on the eco-insect control. Please, there's a leaflet in here. There's also a little, um, what do you call this thing? Um, a little glove. There's, they give you a little a little um, plastic glove to wear. Please wear the glove. It's here for a reason. Um, they give you a little measuring thing. And if you can't read what it says, give it to your grandchild or give it to a younger member of the family that can actually read that it says five mils here, ten mils. Follow the instructions. If it says five mils into one liter of water, you do not put ten mils to think you're going to give it an extra oomph. It doesn't work like that, guys. Please follow your instructions. But Eco Insect will work on most of your edibles. It will also work on your roses. Um, and hey, 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 Wena, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Come back, come back, come back. Yeah, here's, here's a rose you can eat. There we go. Eat that, eat that. Okay, right. We can leave him now. He's, he's, he's keeping busy. Okay. So um, it, it, it works as a very, very good all-rounder um, insecticide, but please read your instructions carefully. There is a waiting period as well, um, and make sure that you follow those as well. So if you're going to spray your cucumbers or your cabbages because you're worried about the caterpillars, because you can see, how do you know? Because look, the leaves are shredded, okay? Typical of caterpillar activity. Look at it, shredded, 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 okay? Same here, shredded. Look at that, finished. There's nothing left. I mean, what am I meant to eat? Really, they've taken away everything. Okay, leaf mana. I want to show you what leaf mana is, um, but I'll get to that just now. I'll get to that just now. Ladybirds, guys, spray responsibly. Um, uh, if you can, really, if you can, use things like oleum. Use some of the EcoBuzz products. Um, the, the oleum works well. It, it, it doesn't have any other side effects, and, and that's important.
okay? It's not getting rid of the bees. It's not killing the ladybirds. It's not getting rid of all those other little guys. Um, of course, <laughs> snails. Oh, my goodness. We're going to talk about snails in a second. Um, but you all know what these guys are. Beautiful earthworms. We need lots of them, lots of them in the garden. Um, and we need these guys. Look at those legs. Full of pollen. Boy. Um, and bug hotels. Bug hotels, we need them. We need them for the solitary bees, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, and remember, you can be really creative with what you want. You can also learn how to make your own bug hotels, but I'm going to get to that also in a second because I've got so much to get through now, and time is running out. Um, so I am just cracking through these, but you know which are the good ones, um, guys. So let's get going. What is leaf mana? I want to show you here very, very quickly. Come, come in here. Come in here. This is on a tomato plant. I picked it this morning. <coughs> Beg your pardon. It is called leaf mana for that exact reason. Because look here. The little the little caterpillar, he hatches, he gets in there, and then he, he crawls along. <coughs> he's mining. He's mining. So there his little, that's where he's been cruising. And what does he do? He eats away all the inner cells. All right, and he hatches, and then as he becomes bigger, he can then start chomping away. Leaf miner is a really, really a problem in tomatoes. Folks, you can use um, Eco Insect for leaf miner, and you can use Lava Pro, all right, for leaf miner. You can use either of these, do the job perfectly. But that is leaf miner on tomatoes. It's a common, common, common thing. Um, all right, uh, now, where do I want to go to? Okay, I'm going to touch on snails very, very quickly because everybody's going to ask about snails and I want to show right. I'm going to move all these these uh, horrid things. I'm leaving I'm leaving the crazy caterpillar there because he can hang out over there for now. Um, but what I do want to show you is a couple of ways to get rid of snails because it's raining, it's happening, the snails are out and about. Now, I've all shown you what to do with the eggshells, guys. Crush them, put them around your plants. Okay, very important that you crush them. You can also use something like this, which is called pheromol. Pheromol is brilliant because it has no other side effects, because it's basically a bait that has a lot of iron in it. When the snails eat it, the iron actually kills them. So it's basically an ingestion of too much nutrition, all right, and they die, which means that if you go along and eat the snail, you know, everybody up to their own thing. If the dog eats the snail, if a bird picks it up, nothing is going to happen to it. This is a, a, a sure way that you know it's going to be okay. All right. Another way that I want to show you, and this is brilliant. I really, really like it. And this is called slug and snail barrier. Now, you would have heard some people saying that, um, you know, that um, snails don't like copper. Yeah. Snails don't like copper. So this all makes sense. So this is basically a type of copper tape. All right, this is a copper tape. You buy it in these rolls over here. You can get it at the online shop, by the way, if you're looking for some of this. Um, and what you do is you take it like this. If it's a pot, if you've got a pot and you're worried about the snails coming along to chomp whatever your plant is, then all I want you to do is you take the snail barrier, you open it up, all right, like that, and then you just stick it around the pot. Nice and easy, okay? And then the snails can't get over it. They cannot because it's almost like a little electric current that goes through them, okay? It's almost like a little electric current. They hate it, so they won't cross it. It's like the Great Wall between Mexico and... Uh, oh, have you seen what's going on in the elections? Oh, come on, come on, baby, come on. Okay, but never mind. We're not talking about that right now. But another really cool way, so if you've got a bigger garden space and you want to to use it is to do this. So take a little society stick, um, a branch in the garden, and you're going to wrap it up like that a bit, okay? And then you're going to open it up like this, nice and easy. Now that I've taken the backing off, which I probably shouldn't have, but anyway, it's still going to do the job. And then I'm going to pop another little stick in here. So there we go. Roll it up like that, okay? You're going to then take this, okay? Look at this. Formula One. This is like Formula One. Are you through the box? Right. So you take this. If this is my flower bed, here's my flower bed. You push this then in. And you push this till it gets just above the soil. Just, just above the soil. Very important that you put it just above the soil because the snails will then come along. They hit the barrier 
and they can't climb over and they won't. So you use the barrier tape around your plants. So if this was my plant here, let's pretend there, you put the barrier tape around it like that, and then the snails won't come along to them. So it works. There are various ways that we can do it. And the other way is just walk around your garden early in the evenings, look for the snails, because after you've had a little bit of rain, if you've had a little bit of rain, the snails will be out, guys. And then remember, there's also the eco slug. Okay, this is the trap. We've shown this many, many times. So if you don't know how it works, please go back to one of our previous Facebook lives. You'll see them on my Facebook page. Go back to those and you'll see how they work. But they work really, really well. Okay, right. There, 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 there. We've dealt with snails. Um, let's put this back over here and the next thing I want to talk to you about is how do we encourage the good stuff so how do we make sure that our plants are, are happy um, how do we make sure that we are encouraging this good balance there are a couple of things number one is never dig your soil over never turn your soil the only time you're going to turn your soil is when you need to go and plant something other than that, your soil is simply going to be layers of beautiful mulch because living in that mulch you end up with these guys. Okay, so let's have a look. Because this becomes a haven for... Ha! <laughs> look at them. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Oh, oh, he hasn't had his Ritalin this morning. Go, dude. Go, go, go. Okay, so living under the leaf mulch, what do you end up with? This is where the life cycle starts happening. Hey, hey, hey. Huey, get back in. Huey's getting very excitable. I'll put you back in the garden just now. Soon as you start creating that beautiful layer of mulch, that's when you get good earthworm activity. Good earthworm activity means that your soil is healthy. It means that you've got a good balance. Um, it means that the nutrition that you are adding into your garden is actually going to be used and not just going to be wasted. Earthworms improve your soil simply by the, the process of eating, ingesting, and yes, pooing it out. But let me tell you, when that poo comes out, wow, it has got so many microbes in it, it's incredibly healthy for your plants. Okay, so it's that good layer of mulch. It starts with the soil. When we're talking about the soil, when planting, guys, use organic. Please use organic. Um, use bone meal. This is a sterilized bone meal. Guys, it does the job perfectly. <gasps> oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, Mason, Mason, Mason. I, my, my praying mantis escaped. Okay. These are the good guys that you want to keep in your garden. If you see them, please make sure that you're always going to get very upset with me now. Um, praying mantis are fantastic. What do they do? They eat, they eat aphids. Um, they eat... Beetles, when they get bigger, um, they eat all sorts of bad hojos that we don't want in the garden. Praying mantis are fantastic. Oh, he's going to get very upset, so I'm going to put him here. No, go there, baby, baby, go there, go there, go, go, go. Hi, sir, look at the no, no. Okay. Kisses. Love you. Okay. Sit. They're not very well trained, are they? Okay, anyway, let's go back to the soil, guys. Please, it's important that you feed your soil with the right stuff. So, uh, when planting, please use the bone meal. Very, very important. Use your bone meal. Use some Atlantic Bio Ocean. Use that as well in your soil because you're improving the soil. We've already got the mulching right. So, when you're planting, you're using the bone meal and you're going to use something like 315 Organic. This is also, it's a pelletalized chicken litter it's got chicken litter in it and it's got lots of other micro elements but what that is going to do it's going to improve your soil not only feed your plants but improve your soil and, and that's what it's all about it's all there guys it's about those layers so if you don't do that and and i always say you've got one chance to plant guys you've got one chance so please get it right dig that hole nice and big put your bone meal in Put your 315 organic. Please put it in and, and make sure that you give your plant enough space to get going. Once you've planted, good thick layer of mulch. Remember to leave enough air spaces between plants. Enough space where plants can spread and grow. As soon as plants are tight up against each other and there's not enough air movement, as soon as you don't have enough air movement, folks, that's when you get hojos. Okay, so enough air movement, which is why, which is why we tell you when you're pruning fruit trees, 
do that big vase shape so that there can be air movement and light in between. Okay? So those little things make a big, big difference at the end in your garden. Okay. Um, and now that, that he's escaped. Hi. He's too cute. Eh? Okay. Okay. Other baddies. Well, whether it's from beetles. Beetles to, yeah, and you get, and you get, and you get, bad boy. Whether it's from beetles to aphids. And remember, this is a little nasturtium. I want to show you this nasturtium is doing exactly what it should be doing. Look at that, black aphids on the nasturtium. Remember, nasturtiums are a trap. They work as an insect trap. So, how, what is the easiest way for nasturtiums, guys? You sow them by seed. I mean, honestly, 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 they are so, so easy. This is a nasturtium called Gleam Mix. Guys, the seeds are big, so you can't get it wrong. You really, really can't get it wrong. Please, get a packet. You can soak these seeds overnight if you're really stressed about it. Um, if you are really stressed, please then soak these seeds overnight. Um, they're quite big. You just take it, shove it into the garden. You don't even need to start growing these in little punnets and that. They are so, so simple. They, they're really tough and they will germinate very quickly. Soak them overnight. The next morning, they'll be a bit softer, easier to germinate. Go into the garden, just shove them into the soil and they will germinate. And once you've got nasturtiums in your garden, trust me, they will be with you forever and ever and ever. Okay. Sow these because look what's happened here. On this little nasturtium, they have become an insect trap for aphids. So if I've got a cabbage growing here and I've got nasturtiums here, the aphids are going to go to the nasturtium before they go to the cabbage because it's yummier. Yes, it's yummier. So then what you do is you can simply treat the nasturtium. So now the insects have all come along, hanging out at the rave party on the nasturtium, then you treat it with your selected insecticide. Or you pull the nasturtium out, put it into a black bag and trash it. Okay, does it make sense? So you've trapped them and then moving them along. Um, or you can just go, which is probably one of the best parts of my day, and you just squash them. I love squashing. I love squashing aphids. Fantastic. You just hear them go pop, 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 pop. It's like when you eat sushi and you get those really nice little bits of caviar and it goes in your mouth. Exactly the same sensation, except that you're popping them with your fingers. So uh, we have, in our garden, we have loads, loads, loads of nasturtiums. They come up all over. If the volunteers come up in the wrong bed, we just leave them sometimes. You know, we just leave them. Let them be. And that would be the same for cornflowers guys and this is what I want to talk to you about remember when we walked through the garden early we heard the bees um, we could hear and we could see um, oh there are plants in the back there right I've been told that, that I mustn't forget that right I'm not going to forget that so what I want to do is actually let's just do that now so look here look here I want to show you because these were grown from seed and they are in this garden now flowering look these are cornflowers all right Nice and tall. These are cornflowers that we picked from the garden this morning. They love, they attract so, so much into the garden. And this you can sow directly. You can sow these straight into the garden bed. So what does that mean? Turn the soil a little bit. Sprinkle the seeds. Keep them well watered initially whilst they're busy germinating. Keep them well watered and then away they go. You might actually need to thin out because you're going to have lots coming up because cornflowers germinate like hair on a dog's back. All right. Borage as well. You can also get something like this. The Bee Friendly, which actually has borage in it. Borage is spectacular. Um, borage is fantastic. It's really good for the garden. And remember, you can also use it for composting. So when your borage starts going over like this, we normally just pull it out. We break it up like this. Break it up and we just lay it down on the garden beds. Because then what happens is the seeds are going to fall around these plants. They're going to start germinating for the next generation. Or you can simply take it and just pop it onto the compost heap. Okay, nice and easy. What else works beautifully? Alisum to attract the bees. And never forget, 
strange things like parsley and pet grass. And I say this, and you might think, Tanya, you're completely mad, but we take this pet grass and we sprinkle it in gaps all over in the garden and we just leave it. Yes, the pets come along, the, the kids come along and eat a few a bit of the grass, but then we leave it and we let it go to seed. When it goes to seed, what happens? We're attracting all the birds. The birds come along and they love it and they pick the seed and off they go and that's what makes that cycle so important. And there are loads of things that you can plant out there that will attract them. Another few things just to consider. When you are putting up, um, when you are trying to attract bees into the garden, guys, there are lots of different types of bees. There are honey bees and then there are solitary bees. And there are thousands and thousands of different um, variety of these. But a solitary bee is a guy who would live in here. Okay, he would live right in here. And yeah, it's weird, eh? Yes, these little holes. Now, this is a little bee hotel for solitary bees. They are called solitary because that's exactly how it is. If you put this in a light shaded area, light shaded. So you need some light coming in, not in deep shade, not in the full sun. Because the bees will come along and she will use a mixture of saliva and um, a mixture of some of the pollen. All right, and then she will make her line this little hole in here. She will line the little hole, and then she will go in and lay her eggs. She then leaves it. She then seals it up, all right, and leaves it, and off she goes. And it's quite weird how nature works, because solitary bees and honeybees are one of the best pollinators. In fact, they are the pollinators in the world. In the world. Without them, our entire existence would, would cease would absolutely cease. So by putting up one of these little guys, and that's why normally out in nature, they would, they would go and lay their eggs like in um, reeds um, or in a little gap in between a log. That's where they would go. So to help them along, you get one of these little guys. So then what happens is she lays a few eggs, then she seals it up with her saliva and sometimes a little leaf that she's cut. She'll seal it up. All right, and then off she goes. Like, job's done. Cheers, eggs. I'm out of here. Thanks for shopping, okay? Then what happens is, all right, then what happens is um, the little eggs hatch, and funny, this is how nature works so amazingly. The eggs towards the outer edge, the eggs towards the outer edge are always male. They're the guys. They hatch first, okay? The eggs towards the back, further in of this little tunnel, are the girls, they hatch later. So the boys are like, they're growing up a little bit. They're nearing. They're going to start like getting ready to go off. They have then become mature. Then what happens is the ladies hatch. They find their mate, do what they need to do, make a sandwich, do whatever, and off they go and start the next life cycle. Isn't it fascinating? Just simply fascinating. So besides solitary bees and making little bug hotels for the skinks, which we want, um, little bits of tile, I want to show you really, really quickly. We made a very, very cool bug hotel also for solitary bees as well, for the good things that you want to keep. So take a watch here. Um, and guys, get the whole family involved because it really is fun. I'll be with you in a sec.
Okay, now how easy is that to make? Everybody's got a tin of something, tuna, something, whatever, bully beef. Ha! <laughs> Do people still eat that? I love bully beef. Okay, but anyway, let's not get on to that. Everybody's got something like that. You can all make it. It's really easy, guys. There are a couple of questions that I want to get to, and this one is very, very important. And I think it's important that we all understand the system because I don't really like killing anything. Guys, I, I really don't. We try and use as little chemicals as possible. If we can, we're using a natural fungus. We're using the natural products that will work within the garden space. And sometimes we've actually just got to sit back and fuss bait. All right. And a question I want to refer to here is um, Forney says, hairy black caterpillars flattened my tree fuchsia, thought it had died, but it sprouted new leaves. Guys, caterpillars have a very short cycle. They come along, they eat, they gobble it up, they gouge, they have a degustation, and then they turn into the next life cycle. They will never kill your plant. They will simply give it a very good pruning, okay? A really good pruning. And like I showed you earlier, and you're probably saying, oh, Tanya, that's absolute nonsense. But you know, on what I picked here, this, was, this is some of my mustard. Yes, these lower leaves are shredded, but the top new leaves that are coming out are fine. So sometimes we've got to find that balance and, and we've got to actually share. And those caterpillars, they went into their next cycle. They pupated. The butterflies came out, the moths, whatever it was, and off they went. The birds would come along and eat those caterpillars and then move along. Grasshoppers never stay stationary in one place. They generally move along. So they'll nibble a bit here, they'll nibble a bit here, there, and then away they go. We got a grasshopper. Whoa! Hello! Hello! Come, dude. Don't be disagreeable. Right. Grasshoppers, they come along, they eat, um, they munch. They don't hang out on one plant because they're ADHD. Okay? And they eat a bit and then off they go. So, you know, guys. It's like we've got, to, we've got to measure and practically think about in terms of the damage that's going to be done. What is something this small with little, little mouth parts that big? How much death and destruction is it going to cause to my spinach? How much? And does it really matter if my spinach has got a few holes in it? No, it doesn't. Because nothing is perfect. Yet in this world that we have been falsely brought to believe and live in and, and, and absorb... Everything has to be perfect. The spinach cannot possibly have a hole in it. Oh, crisis. No, guys. It's okay. And whether it's been eaten from the outside or whether it's been eaten from the inside, it could mean that it's snails or that it's caterpillars. But one way to know if it is caterpillars is to go over, turn the leaf over or on the leaf and look for the feces. Look for the little telltale signs of where it was making its little poo-poos, okay? Um, the snails, because that is a question that I've had here. How do you know if it's snails or caterpillars? The snails, take a torch out at night. Go and look. The powers of observation, folks, are what we need to use in order to become better, more responsible gardeners. And I sound like I'm preaching, and I really am, because I feel really strongly about this. Um, the happier place we make our gardens... Um, the more we invite in, we invite them to come and join us in our own paradises. And yes, nothing is perfect. And the fact that you can buy tomatoes that don't even smell like a tomato today, they don't even smell like or taste like one, is pure evidence that everything has been annihilated and nuked. If you've ever grown a tomato at home, or even a little volunteer came up on the compost heap, a little cherry tomato, and you picked it when the sun had just kind of kissed it, and you popped that into your mouth. It's like heaven. It's like you've never tasted anything so beautiful before. It certainly didn't taste like those tomatoes that we got from that shop. Completely different. Why? Because it was from our gardens, nurtured, without any chemicals, without anything that was added. Just good soil. Good, good soil and responsible gardening. Folks, I know there are loads and loads of questions um, on here today, and we will get to them. We will get through to them later. Um, remember, one final thing. There's a lot of stories about chemicals and this and, and Roundup, dare I mention the word, and a whole lot. 
Guys, it's very important to understand that chemicals used in the right way, in the right way and responsibly, and if you actually read the leaflet, are safe for you. It's important that you follow the instructions. Please read them. If you can't read them, buy a magnifying glass or go and have your eyes tested. But it's really important that you do read, absorb, educate yourself so that you can make responsible decisions. It's so important. But when you think that because you lost the leaflet, I'm just going to add 20 mils into one liter of water. I'm sure that'll get rid of it. That's when things go wrong. And that's when companies get bad names. It's not about that. It's about us, the people who use the product incorrectly. Um, you know, if you had to drink two cases of beer, I'm sure the results won't be all that good. It's the same as most things in life. Guys, please do remember that the magazine is on shelf. The Gardener and Detail Need. Thank you so much for all your support so far. Um, Grow to Eat is also... Um, for the Garden of the November issue, we got a fantastic article on over 20 herbs that you can grow and use in your garden for your fur kids, guys. So get out there and get them because it, oh, and we had such fun putting this article together. And um, we've got great ideas for gardening in small spaces. Very good ideas for that, please. Loads of quick, easy, inexpensive ways that you can transform a small space into something really wow. So have a look. If you don't know where to find your latest garden or detainee, please pop onto our website, go to the Gardener magazine and click onto the tab that says where to find my magazine and you will be able to zoom in and find out exactly where to get it. Grow to Eat is also on sale. Look at those yummy tomatoes. I bet you they taste gorgeous. All right. It's bay leaves. It's edible hedges. It's what to do now in your veggie and herb garden. Um, Get out there um, and grab your copy, guys. Um, thank you. And, and once again, thank you so much for all your support through these really difficult months that, that every business has been going through in South Africa. Um, a very, very big shout out to Effecto. Um, thank you so much uh, to Stark Airs. You rock, guys. Um, Till next week, look after you and yours. Be responsible. Be good gardeners. Treat the soil well and also treat yourselves very, very well. Take care of you and yours, and most importantly, happy gardening. God bless you all. Till next time. Tanya Fissa Live was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, seeds of success. Effecto, say goodbye to garden pests. And tanyafissa.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. In this week's episode of The Gardener, we plant up a pot with serious tropical flair, trim tree branches swiftly and safely, take a closer look at what to sow for colour in spring and summer, and I attempt my very first fairy garden, which was way more fun than I anticipated. It's great for the kids, it's great for the whole family, especially if you've got a small garden where you want a lot of stuff. That's The Gardener, only on The Home Channel.